What is up, YouTube? Venthros here, coming back at you with another RPG Maker VX Ace tutorial. Long overdue tutorial video here. And today, uh, we're going to use... Uh, we're going to use events to uh, work with a door and a switch that unlocks the door so that the player can walk through it. Um, this video kind of builds on some of the other eventing videos that are earlier on in the tutorial series and I kind of wanted to get back into um, you know just covering things that are uh, aren't too complicated yet um, and this one is uh, I wouldn't say it's complicated but it's uh, definitely not for beginners so let's go ahead and get started as you can see here uh, I'm working on a map here called Outside, and I have another map called Inside. Uh, I just drew, threw some maps together just to get this tutorial going. And here's a doorway that we're going to use eventually to go to the other map. Um, so what do we want here? What are we trying to do? Like I said earlier, I want to put a door here, and I want the door to be locked until the player hits a switch that unlocks the door. Um, normally for doors you would right click where you want the door, go to quick event creation and click on door, but we don't want to do that here because that um, uh, it's actually going to um, automatically create a door and I kinda for the purposes of this tutorial think it'd be better if we do this from scratch. So without any ado whatsoever um, let's uh, let's double click here and for now let's just put the door graphic there um, I'm gonna use door one here and just hit OK now we see the door and right here I'm gonna place a switch so go down here in the graphics and go to Pick, pick whatever one you want. I'm using this default, like, simple lever type switch, but you can use one of these buttons or, uh, you know, one of these. You can put it on the wall. It doesn't matter. And hit OK. So I'm just going to hit OK. Now we got our two events uh, up there, and that's all we're going to need um, for the purposes of this tutorial. So let's go back to the switch here. And what we want is we want to make sure that the trigger is the action button, which it should be by default. And what we want to do is we want, uh, when the user clicks the action button, we want it to um, turn on a switch that tells the door to open. So we're going to double click. We're going to go to control switches and we're going to create a new switch called door unlocked and we want to turn that switch on and we also want to play a sound that you know uh, is, a, is an audible clue um, so we're going to play a sound effect and we're going to go to I passed it open 5 I believe or is it open 2 believe it's open one okay I don't know if you can hear that real well to blast the volume just so it's just a simple um, latching sound and that's perfect um, so there we go um, that that's really uh, <laughs> that's really all we need um, to do now what we want to do is we want to um, we, what we want to do is is have the switch, um, this actual switch, uh, move to the right after you use it, and you can continuously use the switch to lock and unlock the door. Um, you don't have to do that. I mean, who wants to relock a door after you know what I mean uh, that you just unlocked? But uh, just in case you wanted to learn how to do that, um, what we're going to do is we're going to use a self switch. So go back, control self switch, we're going to turn self switch A on. And that's it for that, okay? That's it for this page. 
we're going to create a new event page and this is only going to apply when the self switch is on we're going to change the graphic we're going to go to the switch and we're going to use this one here because now the switch is in the other position and when somebody triggers the action button we're pretty much going to do the same thing in reverse we're going to uh, control switch door unlocked is off we're going to play the same sound effect again that's open one and we're going to turn off self switch A so really that that's all we need to do for the switch and just so we can play test the switch and make sure the switch works the way we want it to we'll just walk over here and make sure the switch plays the noise that we want and it does so we're good now we're going to um, we're going to edit the door event which is slightly more complicated um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna double click the door and right now since the door this is this is the first default page and this is when the door is locked so really we're gonna use the action button as a trigger and we're gonna call a text um, a show text command that says the door is locked the switch nearby should unlock it make sure that fits in there it does and that's it um, that's really it for uh, the first page of the door So we're going to create a new event page and the graphic is going to remain the same. So go down here to door. We're going to use the same one. The trigger is still going to be the action button. Sorry, I'm uh, actually recovering from a cold. so try not to cough all over uh, all over the microphone uh, we want page 2 to occur when the door unlocked switch is on so now that the door unlocked switch is on when the player hits the action button we want the door to open and um, I'm actually going to show you how to animate the door opening um, so first we're going to play a sound And we're going to use open four, open five, I don't know. That's it. Open five is a nice door opening sound. And then we're going to do the actual animation of the door. Now, when you do a quick event creation for a door, it does all the, you know, the computer does all this by itself. Um, but it's useful to to understand how the animation itself actually works. So uh, I'm going to double click the graphic again real quick. And as you can see, um, this, this, uh, this door uses, um, this is a, they call it a 12 tile animation. There's four rows of three. And the way that we're going to use the animation each row here is, this row is the up row this is the left row this is the right row I'm sorry this is the down row left row right row and the final is the up row like if you go over here to people this is the best way to to understand it facing down facing left facing right and then facing up well for the purposes of the door we have to use those same conventions when we want to animate the door excuse me so what we're going to do is we're going to do a 
um, set move route command. <coughs> Excuse me. And by default, the door is turned down. Um, I'm kind of making quotation marks in my <laughs> with my hands, even though you can't see it. But just remember that the first row is down. So what we want is we want it to um, show the left animation. And then we want to use the wait command so you can actually see the animation a little more clearly. And I just use three frames um, because that's what the system uses when you use a create uh, a quick create door um, animation. So then we're going to use turn right, another wait command for three. And then we are going to use the turn up. Um, this actually shows the door open and you'll see the, the, the doorway that you can walk through to get to the next room. So there you go. And by default, the game makes the player automatically enter any door that it opens. Um, I don't like that, so we're not going to do that in this tutorial. Um, just try it one time. Use a quick create command to um, quick create a door. And when you walk through the, when you open the door, you automatically walk through it. Um, you know, it, it, it's really, it's like the choo-choo train. Like, a lot of people like the choo-choo train. Like, when you can see all the party members uh, when you're on the map. I don't like it. It's just a matter of preference. So now that the door is open, we want to turn on a self-switch. Okay? Um, so we're going to turn on self-switch A for the door. And now... The door is open, self switch A is on. Now we're going to do the actual transfer event. So now that the doorway is open, we're not going to have a graphic. And the trigger is not going to be the action button. It's actually going to be player touch. So when the player walks into the doorway, that's when this is going to happen. And really, we're just doing a simple uh, transfer player event, just like we've done before to the inside map right there and that's it uh, that, that that is your whole event and uh, you're gonna notice right away that when we get inside I didn't create a transfer event to come back out um, for the purpose of keeping this tutorial uh, short and sweet let's give it a play test to see how we did Of course, I messed something up, didn't I? So let's see where I messed up. Uh, okay, I didn't set the uh, self switch here. Easy mistake to make uh, when you're rushing. Let's see how we do now. So there's our door. Let's walk up to the door and try to open it with the action button. And then, of course, the message tells us that the door is locked. Now the door should be unlocked. We're going to use the action button again. The door is open. And we have transferred to the inside map. Now, uh, one thing that uh, I left out because I don't like this either... Um, normally when you transfer to um, another area you can use uh, there's a sound effect I think it's called move um, yeah this one here uh, I didn't use that uh, but feel free to uh, throw that in there if you'd like and that's it uh, this is a very quick um, easy way for uh, to get player engagement when you're talking about doors um, I'm actually working on another video now uh, about like using a variable to store value for a key so you have to have a certain key to open a certain door uh, that uses variables and there's a couple other tutorials in the works but uh, you know I just thanks um, thanks for watching thanks for supporting me uh, let me know in the comments down below what 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 you want to see as long as it's not a side view battle system, uh, we could probably make that happen. And the thing with the side view is just it's just too complicated for what we're trying to do. 
Um, I might show a video on how to import a side view battle system that already exists. Like one that we're not going to create from scratch. I might show you how to import that. Um, but we're not going to be making a side view battle system uh, anytime soon. Actually, I, I think that's outside of the scope of my abilities right now with uh, Ruby. But anyway, I digress. Thanks again for watching. Uh, thumbs up the video, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see. And thanks again for all the support. See you next time.